What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Programmies and welcome back to this series on Python. Till now, we learned about three different sequences, lists, tuples and strings. These are compound data types that allow us to work with multiple items at once. In this video, we will learn about dictionaries which is also a compound data type. However, the items in a dictionary and how we access them is a bit different than other sequences like lists and tuples. Let's see what dictionaries are all about and how we can use them in Python. A dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. It is similar to associative arrays in other programming languages. To create a dictionary in Python, we need to put these key value pairs inside curly braces separated by commas like this. This dictionary has two items separated by commas and each item is a key value pair separated by a colon. For the first item, its key is name and its value is Linus. Similarly, for the second item, its key is age and its value is 21. Let me print this dictionary and run it. So here I'll say print person1 and when I press run, then the same dictionary is printed. There are a couple of things we need to remember when we create dictionaries. First, keys of a dictionary can be any immutable object like numbers, strings and tuples. However, they cannot be objects that can be modified like lists. Second, the keys must be unique for identification. Let me change the name key to 10 and this age key to a tuple and run it. So here I'll say instead of name, I'll say 10 and I'll turn this age into a tuple. And now when I press run, then as expected, this is a valid dictionary. This works because both these keys, 10 and this tuple age are immutable objects. Dictionaries are optimized to get values when the key is known. If you remember, we used numbered indices like 0, 1 and 2 to get elements from sequences like lists and tuples. In the case of dictionaries, these keys are used as indices. I have this program from our last example. Suppose we want to get Linus from this dictionary. To get this, I'll type square brackets after our dictionary name and inside I'll type the name of the key which is name and now when I press run, I get Linus. Similarly, to get 21, we need to use age as a key. So here, instead of name, if I type age and press run, then this time I get 21. Now let's see what happens if we try to access a key that's not in the dictionary. I'll change this age to hobbies. And when I press run, then Python tells me that there's a key error because hobbies is not present in this dictionary person1. Sometimes, instead of getting this error, we may just want to know if the key exists or not and decide what to do based on it. In that case, we can use the dictionary's get method like this. So here, I can say person1.get and inside parenthesis, I can say hobbies. Let me run this code. This time, instead of an error, we get none. This none object means empty or no value. This can be useful because I can use this in an if statement and run different codes based on it. We can also pass a second argument to the get method. If the key doesn't exist, this default value is returned instead of none. I'll provide a list as a default value. So here I can say person1.getHobbies and inside let me pass a list saying dancing and fishing. Now when I press run, now instead of none, we get this list back. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the Programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. I have this person one dictionary we have been working on in my screen. Now let's change the name to Dennis. To do so, we need to assign a new value to the key like this. So here I'll say person one name equals Dennis. I'll run it. 
and we can see the value of the name key is now Dennis. If we try to assign a value to a key that doesn't exist yet, it will add a new item to the dictionary. Let me show you. So here I'll say person1 hobbies equals dancing and fishing. I'll press on and as you can see a new key hobbies has been added and its equivalent value dancing and fishing has also been added to this dictionary. To remove an item from the dictionary we can use the dictionary's pop method. Let's see how we can remove this item from the dictionary. To remove the item we need to pass the key of the item in the pop method like this. So here I'll say person one dot pop name. Now when I press run then you can see that name Linus has been removed from the dictionary. This pop method also returns the value of the removed item. So if I wrap this code inside a print function and press run then I get Linus which was the removed item. There are many of these dictionary methods readily available for us to use. This makes working with dictionaries much easier. You can find all the dictionary methods and how they work along with examples in our website programmings.com. I'll include the link in the video description. Similar to sequences, we can easily iterate through items of a dictionary by using a for loop. And in each iteration of the loop, we get a key of the dictionary. Let's see that in action. I have the same dictionary we've been working with. So here I'll say for key in person one and here I'll say print key. Now when I press run, then as you can see name and age which are the keys of the dictionary are printed. When we know these keys, we can easily get the corresponding values as well. Let me add a line to print values of the dictionary in each iteration of the loop. So in the next line, I'll say print person one key. Now when I press run, then as you can see, name Linus age 21 is printed, which are the keys and the corresponding values in this dictionary. Starting from Python 3.7, the order of items in a dictionary is preserved. So when we iterate through a dictionary, we get the keys in the order in which they are in the dictionary. At this point, we have pretty much covered the basics of Python dictionaries. Before we end this video, here's a task for you. Can you guess the output of this program? I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause the video. As always, you'll find the answer to this question in our GitHub repository. I'll also include this link in the description below. Here's a recap of what we learned in this video. A dictionary is a compound data type that allows us to work with key value pairs. We can easily access a value from a dictionary if its key is known. To add or change items from a dictionary, we can assign values to the keys. We can remove items from a dictionary by using the pop method. And finally, we learn to iterate through keys of a dictionary using a for loop. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I provided the link in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. In the next video, we will learn about another collection data type, sets, which is similar to sets in mathematics. Join me in this video series and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!